Shalom. I want to say Ka Halal Yehawa Wa Yehawa Shai Bahashim Wa Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to the elect, pushing this word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Um, my video today, I'm, I'm making a video on just uh, scriptures. They're not, they don't, they don't all align with each other, but they're just scriptures that um, that uh, really resonate with me when I read them all the time, over and over again. So, um, in the book of Ecclesiastes, this is uh, chapter seven. So uh, Ecclesiastes seven and three, and it reads, "Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better." Now, I, I say this often, but I'll say it again. Um, when you look up the word "heart" in the Hebrew, uh, the word there is "lab," which means your mind. So when it says "sorrow is better than laughter," Well, why does the Bible say sorrow is better than laughter? Because according to Christians, um, they think that they, they explain the Bible to be, um, basically they preach the prosperity doctrine. You know, love, 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 peace, peace, peace. And never actually talking about the, some, uh, the wicked things that the Bible speaks about. You know, the, the wicked things and, and the evil things of the Bible. You know, the, the, the type of hell that's going to come upon this earth. And Jake uh in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But the point it says sorrow is better than laughter. And it's true, man. Sorrow at times, especially in, in most of the time in this society, most of the time sorrow is better than laughter. Because of through because you gotta think you can't grow without pain. An example of that, you know, if you're an athlete, you go play basketball, you you you, you play whatever sport, you know, and you're winning all the time if you're always right and you're always winning, there's nothing to be learnt. Hence why you're always right and always winning. But it's not, you don't learn, it's not, it's, um, it's not until you face adversity or pain in some, or fail in some form or fashion, it's when you learn, it's actually when you start learning. Okay? And in, th and in this kingdom, Esau being the rulers of this kingdom, all right, uh, the, the, the banking families, they're, um, so okay, they're big on pushing um, uh, that uh, that happy lifestyle all the time, you know. When that's just not the reality of things. That's just not the reality of things. In this world, you're 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 um, you're you um, are convinced to think happy and good thoughts all the time, which keep you at bay and actually keep you blinded from the truth. And and that's when you come into this truth, man. And when you come into this truth, and the Lord gives you the spirit to do His work, you're gonna face lots of hell and lots of adversities. Okay, you're gonna be going Satan as soon as because like I, I said this a couple of videos back, but Satan's not looking for the people who are in the world because he already has them. Satan's looking for people who are trying to go against the world. All right, because most likely the people who are going against the world, well, they're doing it because they. They're of the Most High. I mean, they're, they're they're of the elect. They're working for the Most High in some shape or form. So, in in and and the scriptures talk about being. Um, actually, I'll just get that real quick. Because when you're in this truth, man, when you're doing this work, a lot of a lot of a lot of your life in this truth is sorrowful. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a balance to everything, but uh, and there's a moderation to everything. You will have times where you're happy and you're good and such and. And the, and the and the scriptures, the Bible speak about good things and bad things. But you know, these Christians are overdoing it. They don't have balance. They always talk about prosperity, prosperity, not preparing you for the wicked things that are to come, that are to happen. So um, my precept is uh, Revelations three and um, Revelation three and nineteen, and it says, "As many as I love, I rebuke and I chastise." And I chasten, be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's straight and forward, man. The Lord says, for as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Or it's like, yeah, I rebuke and chastise. And the Lord will do that to you, man. When you're in this truth, you're going to catch hell. You're going to catch hell, and you're going to be tempted at all corners. 
it is um, it is in your best interest to make sure that you're doing everything within your power to stri- to strengthen to strengthen uh, your spirit, whether it be through fasting, or overcoming adversities, or whatever, or sh- and studying, going out there doing the work, week in week out, making videos like I'm doing right now. You know, keep yourself keep your spirit on fire because it, as soon as that fire starts to dwindle, that's when Satan is that's when Satan can easily creep in. And, and then eventually, you know, once he's in, it's hard to get him out, right? So going back to Ecclesiastes 7 and 3, it says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, okay, the sadness of your, of your, of, um, of your, of your, uh, of your persona, of your face, of your body language, okay, by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The mind is made better when you go through it, man. You you think about all the people that are famous and rich in this kingdom, all right, in the society. Well, look at their all. Look at all their backstories and where do they come from? A lot of them came from the slums, right? They come from the ghetto. They come from a lot of heartbreak and agony, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of trials and tribulations. And it's not. It wasn't all the good things that 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 made them that made them rich or famous or whatever they are now, but. It was all the trials and tribulations that they went through that helped refine their mind, helped make them stronger in the mind more than everybody else. That's why you'll get two athletes playing. You know, you get a rich, rich kid who uh, who, who plays basketball uh, compared to uh, a poor kid or somebody who's from the ghetto who plays basketball. I bet you nine times out of ten, the kid who's from the ghetto is going to play way harder than the rich kid because he has more to lose. All right, they 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 have a they've been going through so much that everything that they attack it has such an intensity to it, and that's what it, that's and that's what that's how you're supposed to um, approach this truth. I mean, approach your walk when you're in this truth. When you get when you're catching hell, well, know that it's the Most High showing love to you, man. Just like a father showing love to his kid, man. If and if your parents don't care about you, they're not going to rebuke you. They're not going to discipline you. But if they care about you, then they'll discipline you because they don't want you to be doing things that will lead to harming yourself. All right? Same thing with the Lord. Okay, so verse 4, it says, The heart of the wise, all right, is in the house of mourning. The heart, the mind of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart, okay, the mind of fools is in the house of mirth. Let's look up that word mirth and see what it means. Give me two seconds. Mirth. It says gladness or gaiety as shown by accompanied or as shown by or accompanied with laughter. All right. Um... So yeah, basically to do everything with happiness, right? To be happy. Uh, it says this, the uh, words that are synonymous to mirth are cheer, cheerfulness, cheerness, festivities, gaiety, um, gayness, you know, because the word gay means happy, um, mirthfulness. So basically the word mirth to be, it means to be in a happy state, all right? To be in a joyful, cheerful state. So when you read the scripture again, it says the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Why are the heart of the wise in the house of mourning? Well, because the elect on this planet, they know, they really know what's going on. Their mind, they're open up to the truth. All right. It's like the matrix. We're in a paradox where, where, where everybody thinks everything is good. You know, life is good. There's no, World War Three is not happening, blah, 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 this and that and the third. And because of that, they have, they have no. They're always constantly happy. They're always constantly good, and and in a deep sense, in a deep sense, they're constantly kept at bay, right? But for the ones who know the truth, the ones for the men who are woke up, woken up to the truth and know the truth, guess what? They're constantly, you know, are in a in a how in 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 a, in a state of mourning most of the time, because they know the truth. They understand what's really going on in the world, and they understand that this really strings being pulled behind the scenes and the government is not for you the government is really against you you know uh, uh esau is really your enemy you know all this that and the third man there's so much there's so much that the society is hiding 
so much that Esau is hiding in society, it keeps so much people, it keeps everybody at bay. That when, for a person to wake up to the complete truth, there's no, no way you would be, you wouldn't be upset. There's no way you wouldn't be in that, in a state of mourning. All right. So verse five, it says, it is better to hear the rebuke of a, of the wise than for a man to hear the songs of fools. And that's very true, man. That's straight into the point. You know, you, you know, people, in this in this world, always say you know I'd rather have honest friends than than uh, than friends that lie. Well, that's bullshit because when you do become honest, you get a lot of people who go against you. But yet the same people who go against you will say, yeah, I want honest friends. And then when they get honesty, they they uh, they buck up and get emotional. You know that and that's how that's how ninety nine percent of this world is society is. That's why no one everybody's cordial. No one talks about the truth anymore. No one no one really says says anything real hence these churches man by these churches these pastors are never going to really tell you guys the truth at all because in the end of the day they need to make money they need to make money and 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 the church is a business and if they keep telling you the truth which a lot of it is it's hard to, it's hard truth man it's not easy truth it's hard truth that that will send a lot of people away right that will be sending a lot of people away. King Solomon said, out of a thousand people, he found one righteous man. And out of a thousand women, he found none. Okay? So, imagine if the pastors took that same approach and spoke the truth. They would, they're, like, two-thirds of the congregation would be gone. You know, a couple men might, they might resonate with a couple men and they'll stay there. But these pastors are not sincere. They're looking for money, so they'll tell you what you like to hear. Because it keeps you in their business at their church, and that's just the truth. All right, so uh, I'm gonna skip to verse seven. It says, "Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart." Now, this is parabolic. It doesn't literally mean a gift destroys the heart. Because I've gotten gifts before, and you know, it doesn't destroy your mind. But it's talking about when you're constantly um, in a state of um, happiness in a state of um what's the word i'm looking for um we're gonna call, like for you, okay for example if you think about somebody you think about rich people all right rich people who constantly get whatever they want they can get whatever they want they're rich their minds are are actually not as smart as they could be if they were op if they're if they were constantly having if they were having more um adversity if they're going through more adversity like for example the, the kardashians they woke up in a rich family okay those 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 uh those women in that family woke up in a rich family all right the daughters of that family do you think you think and kylie uh kylie Gen uh um kylie uh kardashian would understand the struggles of a man that comes from the slums absolutely not and by that reason alone She's a lot more frivolous and a lot more gay, and she has a lot more gaiety in her because she doesn't understand because she's getting multiple gifts, which destroys the mind. You know, you, you, if you have a kid, you raise a child and you're constantly, you're constantly spoiling your child. Okay. That's even a better example. You're constantly spoiling your child. That child will grow up to be a very rotten child, man. Very rotten, very selfish because it's used to getting whatever it wanted. It's used to getting all the good things. But if you have a child who gets who gets um, who gets gifts once in a while, but is 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 uh, uh, but you're strict with them and you're very disciplined with them, they're gonna grow up to be a very disciplined uh, person. All right. So that's why he says, surely oppression, and it's true, oppression would make a wise man mad. You know, the elect, we we you know, the elect, Lord William of the elect, we understand where we're supposed to be. We understand that we're supposed to be on the top, ruling the world okay we're supposed to be in, in in magnificent bodies celestial bodies with spiritual powers bodies that can obtain that will have the bible the word of the lord uh uh in them to make it nature man okay uh um uh the things we know we know that we're that we're above the people that are oppressing us right the edomites and the other nation that oppress us we're above them but yet we're still being oppressed all right, being a wise man and knowing these things, you will be mad. You will get angry because you know where you're supposed to be, but look at you, here you are. 
you know, and 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 that's why like it says again, surely oppression makes it, maketh a wise man mad, and a gift de destroys the heart. When you're in this truth, man, it's about being focused. All right, you more bad things are gonna happen to you than good things because it's to prepare you for the for the t uh, for the uh, for the great day of Jacob's trouble, man, and even deeper the hour of temptation. Okay, when all hell is breaking loose. And you've been going through so much hell, you gotta understand there's a reason why the men of the Lord suffered like they did. There's a reason for that, and it's and, and the reason is it was to build them up for the final the final destination of their journey, man. The final uh the final act of their journey. And the final act for the elect, those of who, those of us that are doing the work in truth and sincerity of our journey will be the te our temptation, man. And that's coming soon, man. This society is being destroyed soon. All right, and it's time, and that's why we need to buckle up. That's why we need to make sure we, we're, you know, that we're, our, our, we cross, we cross our T's and dot our I's, man. Stay focused, stay diligent, and take everything negative that happens towards you. Which be cheerful about it, because that's the Lord. Like I read earlier in Revelation three and nineteen, that's the Lord, uh, uh, um, um, building you up, showing you love. All right, because when all hell breaks loose and everybody's running around like chickens with their head cut off. Because you've already um, you've already been through the trenches, you've already been through the hell, this is nothing new to you. You'll be able to be stable, calm, and make decisions from a wise mental state of mind. Not a, not a, not a mind that's all over the place, chaotic. Hence the scriptures say, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of that times. When all hell is breaking loose, guess what's going to keep you in track? The word, man, the knowledge, not just the word, but the experience that comes with this word, okay? So, anyways, I feel like I made my point. So, with that, I'm going to close. Ka hala yahawa, wa yahawa shai, ba hashim, ruka kadash. Double honors to the apostles in the Yale's Great Millstone. Salutations to the elect pushing this word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth, man. Death and destruction to this wicked kingdom. Two thirds of Israel. Shalom. Mm -hmm.